Great to have you back on the show, Lawrence. Welcome. Hi, hey, Sarah. Thanks for having me today. So I think Wall Street viewed this quarter as a big sigh of relief when it comes to some of the pricing and the sales growth that you saw. How do you frame what happened here and the reaction, which is very positive? Well, we're really pleased with the results, obviously, and it's a great start to our year. It is only the first quarter of the year, but uh, it does give us confidence in our in our outlook for the whole year. We had solid growth across both our consumer and our flavor solution segment. We made great progress on cost containment, and uh, and I think that analysts were ex as excited as we were, and investors are reacting uh, to the incredible uh, innovation that we've got coming up in the rest of the year. But uh, the growth that you mentioned, I mean, wasn't it all pricing? But volumes didn't grow. Uh, volumes actually uh, didn't grow during that time. But, you know, we're still lapping some uh, pretty big impacts from a year ago um, that, uh, that, that weigh on the volumes. You know, a year ago, we still had Omicron in the U.S. and in Europe. Um, we exited Russia, so we're lapping that. And, uh, and one of our biggest markets outside the U.S. is China, which, of course, was in lockdown or having an epidemic during that time. And so, you know, these are, uh, these are, are really strong, uh, strong results. And I'd say that the, uh, the, the, the strength of uh, volume, uh, you know, it, at, at the same time that we did have significant pricing action, uh, really shows that price elasticity isn't, that, isn't really a major factor for us. Which we've heard over and over again from the consumer staples and the food companies in particular. And at the same time, we are wondering as consumers when food inflation comes down. So are you still raising prices? What, what is your outlook on that? Unfortunately, it's still in. So as our cost, you know, our cost inputs go up, we're going to have to pass that on. Um, you know, for McCormick, uh, I think you know one of the things that was good news uh, for uh, investors on the call was that, for the most part, uh, we've got our pricing for this year uh, done. You know, most of it, you know, most of our pricing is in place, and uh, and we're able to have much more productive conversations with our customers about growth opportunities uh, around our innovation program and around promotional activity, um, then uh, and 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 that sort of thing. It's, it's been fascinating, and Sarah gets to the, the question of, of how much price you can take when volumes are negative. Is there, like a, is there an industry standard as to how far volumes need to fall before, uh, before a producer or a manufacturer backs off on price? Well, you know, I think that you're looking at it from the wrong, direct, wrong direction. I think a lot of this conversation around price is, uh, frankly, uh, overblown. You know, the price of everything seems to be going up in our, uh, all, all around us. And, uh, and, and the price for McCormick spices is actually pretty modest, you know, compared to other uh, factors that might be going into, you know, into the consumer's consumption basket. We actually see ourselves as part of the solution to the inflation problem that consumers face. I mean, it literally only takes pennies a serving to uh, bring great taste to a meal, and, and that creates the, you know, 90% of the enjoyment of the meal. <laughs> I agree, for hot sauce and cinnamon. I can put them both on everything. <laughs> hey, so, everything's, so Lawrence better, <laughs> everything's better with a little bit of cinnamon. I, I totally agree with that. So what, what are you seeing on trends like cooking and eating at home? Because it, it, everybody expected this to just fall off a cliff when, when the economy reopened. It hasn't. It stayed high. And now there are worries about the economy. And I wonder if you're yeah. seeing even more people cooking. There's been a long-term trend towards more cooking at home, and it's really fueled by the younger generation. You know, millennials and Gen Zers, they, they actually prefer cooking at home. They perceive it as more health, healthy. It's an outlet for creativity. Uh, it's a chance to do flavor exploration. And if there's going to be pressure on the consumer's pocketbook, one of the first things to go, frankly, is expensive dining out. Uh, eating at home is much more economical. And, uh, and so we... Yeah, we tend to do well whether times are good or times are hard. Um, yeah, the consumer wants you know great flavor. The long-term trends are are in our favor, and uh, and 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 I think that the outlook for you know you know the consumer you know still you know being resilient, but and and still cooking at home is is pretty positive.